channel everybody uh, today I'm going to be doing something not really related to 3d printing there are some aspects of 3d printing involved from model design to uh, laser engraving using one of my 3d printers uh, my mother just had her 60th uh, birthday and I wanted to get her something uh, special and something that required a lot of thought put into it so she's always in the gardening and doing stuff out in her yard uh, she's got a lot of uh, decorative things in her yard, so I thought I would come up with uh, a wishing well uh, and make it personal to her. So I used 123D Design to come up with the design I had in my mind. Uh, I used the model in 123D Design to get all my angles for all my cuts in the wood shop, and I utilized one of my 3D printers that I have set up for laser engraving to make the wishing well personal to her. So. Let's go take a look at the model that I came up with in uh, 1 through 3D Design, and then we'll head out to the wood shop and we'll begin building this uh, wishing well. Here's the concept model I have designed that I intend to use to create a wishing well in my wood shop. I spent a few days on this and uh, I've taken something that I've had in my mind and I've d put it into this design model. Now, Everything in here is in millimeters, but I intend to do a one-to-one -one conversion to inches. So if I take a measurement, say, of here to here, and it tells me it's 13.96 millimeters, uh, in the wood shop, I'm going to translate that one-to-one -to, -one to 13.96 inches. There will be a few different formats of this model available on my Thingiverse page. I will put a link in the description below. Uh, you'll be able to use the, the model file itself as your blueprint to design your very own wishing well. If you have access to the carpentry shop tools required to do this project. Uh, if you don't, it's still an interesting model that you can download, you can combine everything, you can 3D print it, you can split it out, whatever you want. Um, but for my purposes, I designed this model to help me create a real world wishing well at a wood product. Uh, now that I have the model all ready to go, I'm going to pull all my measurements from my various pieces and I'm going to begin uh, the work in the wood shop. So in the end, it might not turn out exactly like this. I might modify the actual wood project a little bit as I go, but I'm still going to try to adhere as much as I can to this original design and I will be using my Tron XY X3 3D printer to do some laser engravings. I plan on doing some laser engravings up here on the ceiling. I think I'm only going to stick to maybe four, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, I don't know. But I do want to put something up here, make it personalized for my mother, as this is going to be a birthday gift for her. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's head out to the wood shop and begin this project. the model I took measurements to get our cut angle here on our base pieces and I set up my compound miter saw for that angle. Uh, in the model our outside uh, length of each piece I think was a little over nine inches but I wanted to make the well a little bit more smaller more compact so I went with eight and a quarter inch on this outside edge. I know it doesn't sound like much but three quarters of an inch but when you add ten of these together it actually increases the size of the, the wishing well base by a good uh, six to eight inches. There will be ten of these for each base layer. And what I'm going to do right now is I've got some cut. I'm going to proceed to cut the rest of them just out of a standard two by four. And it's just, they're just quick cuts. It's just cut it on one side, flip the two by four, line up your measurement, which I have on the back of my uh, saw here. Make your second cut, proceed on to your next piece. So let's uh, continue cutting these out. I'm going to do, uh, I think in the model I've got five layers, but uh, once I, I stacked up a few here just to see how high that is, I think I'm going to go with six layers. So I'm going to need 60 pieces for my base. So 
So let's finish. I've got about 30 cuts. So let's finish those off. Line them up. And what we need here is a ratchet, uh, ratcheting tie down strap. Ratchet holds that in place. Leave that, set that aside for the glue to dry. Make sure all our pieces are completely lined up on here and level to one another. And I'm going to shoot uh, some uh, finishing nails into this just to keep it in, help keep it in place. model file uh, for the roof of the wishing well uh, at each uh, change in angle we have this tapping and what I'm going to do is I have some uh, three quarter inch by one and a half inch pine board I have some already stained from a previous project I'm going to use those and we have the table saw set up at the angle that we pulled from the model and I have a sample piece cut here, so we see we have our angle right there. And I'm just going to proceed to run um, some. Okay. So now I'm just going to proceed to run some more pine through the saw to get a handful of these for my project. We have our profile here. I just have to clean a little bit up inside where the blade intersected itself, but that is the profile I'm looking for. And these sneakers, when they're when I'm all complete, will fit like that. And um, it'll make a nice transition from roof panel to roof panel.
two more rings. We'll have those glued up and set aside, and then we'll start working on the, the roof. Next, we're going to cut some of our roofing pieces uh, for the uh, wishing well. I have some 1 inch by 10 inch knotty pine shelving here. Um, our pieces in the model are going to have a width of 6 and an eighth inch by, I believe it was 14 and um, 3 eighths. So I'm going to have to rip these down on my table saw. I'm debating on doing that or I'm debating on making them the full 10 inches and stepping up 3 instead of 4. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Either way, really, in those, either way, um, for those dimensions, I'm pretty flexible. The, the measurements that I do really need that are critical from the model are my angles. So I've taken some measurements from the model. I've written them down and I'm going to transfer them to my compound miter saw here. The first thing I want to do is get my angle for my side cut. And then I want to get that pitch in there. So that is 50 and a half degrees and that angle tip is 16. Do a compound cut. Nope. So that's set up. So let's take our first cut here and see how it looks. That'll give us something like this right here. the roof of the wishing well for the ro ro all rows above the first row uh, as per the model how I designed it they have a notch in them uh, close to I think uh, one half inch to five eighths of an inch that allow those layers to sit down and over the layers below them giving the roof a nice three-dimensional finish so I've got the table saw set up here for 5 eighths and I'm going to rip a notch in the edge of a couple of my pine boards. Uh, then I'll begin cutting the next row of roofing pans. nails sticking out on the inside. We'll cut those with a pair of wire cutters later. And these, this edge here is going to be hidden uh, with some nice trim that we've already cut up right there. It fits perfect. No wobble. And we'll put a couple of nails through there and some glue to make sure that's solid. And there's our first row of roof panels. Let's take a closer look here. We're going to take a break here and we're going to switch over to something a little different. Uh, the next layer of roof panels, I want to engrave some designs into a few of those panels on my Tron XY X3 3D printer. So let's uh, jump ahead to that, shall we?
now that I have all my engravings done, I'm doing four engravings. And I got one more over here. So now that I have all of my engravings done, I'm going to take my second layer and cut them to the right height. So there's the second tier of our roof. And we don't have to wait for that glue to dry. We could just merge the two right away. So for my trim pieces, I have to make little notches at the ends of each one so they fit up into the uh, next tier of roof panels. So what I'm going to do here is figure out my angle. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set my angle on my saw out to 15 degrees. Uh, line it up here. I'll get a cut like that. Let's see if that angle is good enough. If it's not, we'll make it a little greater. So it's not quite good enough yet, but it's close. I'm going to go probably about 16, 17 degrees here. Do is I want to get, I don't want the bottom of the blade of this. I want the whole side of the blade of this so that I don't have wood left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up on something. Um, this might be high enough.
Now I'll do my first uh, set of trim pieces in place. Nail them through and nail them. So I have my niece, my mother's granddaughter, the family name engraved. The grandson, my father. And a touching phrase. <clears throat> okay, so I did my final ring for my base off camera, and I also cut some uh, one by four boards for a lip uh, at the top, at the, the very top ring. And we'll assemble these a little later, but that's going to be the height of the wishing well right there. So what I'm working on right now is I'm trying to uh, cut some interior pieces for the roof so that I can mount a frame to it. Welcome to here. And we'll cut a groove here so it fits flush. And then we'll be opposite. Now I'm thinking a roof's going to sit over about that far. So I'm just going to, again, eyeball it to what suits my needs. But if you go by my 3D model, everything's in millimeters. Just convert them one to one to inches. And you should be able to pretty much replicate that model to a larger scale in your wood shop. Doesn't look quite right, way too high. I'm going to bring that down over here.
That's a better height. So off camera, I drilled and epoxied a solar night light to the roof. Um, I have some more, uh, this is some PL Premium here, holding this piece of wood in and filling all the gaps, making sure it's sealed. And then if we go in here, we look up underneath. We can see the uh, solar powered uh, light. Uh, it does give enough light to give a, a, a faint luminescence in here in the dark. Um, so we have uh, some screws in place there. Now that I know I want, I have my roof securely where I want it. So we're almost done of the wishing well. Uh, I just have to, uh, I got a, a wooden dowel I'm going to put through and come up with a handle. It's all soft here. I'm applying the one. take my larger one, I've already got one of these, I'm going to make one more, this is the, the leftover piece from the top piece, so I can reuse it, I'm going to make one more because I'm going to drill a hole through, I'm going to take the smaller hole saw and I'm going to drill a hole through the center, I'm going to slide this on, I'm going to drill a hole, put a countersink in it and screw it in place and it'll prevent this from uh, coming out. So I'm going to make one more of these. Uh, only one of them I'll need to drill a larger hole for. The other one I can just screw on the end. Slide over this handle and we'll just screw it in place. I don't want to split this very delicate pine. And I want my screw to be at least flush or slightly below the surface.
ganando. That's going to come down like that. I'm going to take the remainder of my dowel. It's going to come out like this. It's going to be a little handle. Okay. So this is what we're left with. Sand up the edges a little bit and I'll drill two holes here. So that I have my handle for my uh, wishing well. So this was the adhesive I used to uh, bond the solar lights to the roof of the wishing well. And then that roof panel on the wishing well, I use some CL Premium to uh, bond that to the roof. Okay. Drill the countersink a spot for a screw to hold that in place. And um, then that will go on there. I'm debating on a bucket, but I don't think I'm going to do a bucket. You can pick up a small wooden bucket pretty much anywhere. The wishing one, however, she can't. So I think I'm just going to do some little bit of touch-up sanding and fill. And then I'm going to stand in the project for my end anyway. Just an afterthought. Uh, in my model, I have some decorative support features here. And uh, I thought I'd go ahead and add some of those just to give the wishing well more detail. So this is what I've come up with. So they're going to go like this right there. And there will be one on either side. And attach up inside there and in the center of this 2x4 here. So I'm going to attach those now and then we'll take a look with them all four in place. So here they are attached, the, the superficial braces. They just give it a little extra detail is all. They could stand out a little more. So now I'll say I'm officially done with the wishing well. Attached with screws and glue. So again, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.